One of the most popular interview question is, what happens when you type an URL? Let's find out. So obviously when you type an URL like www.amazon.com, you see the website in your computer or your mobile phone. The interviewer wants to know what happens under the hood so that you can see this website. At the end of the day, everything is a computer to computer interaction. So in very rudimentary level, Amazon.com is running on a bunch of Amazon EC2s. Those EC2s are exposed by an Elastic Load Balancer service. And Amazon.com is hosted in Amazon Route 53. And there is an alias record where Amazon.com is pointing to this Elastic Load Balancer. At the end of the day, for your computer to interact with this load balancer, you need the IP address of the load balancer. So the core of this question is, how does when you type www.amazon.com, your computer gets the IP address of this load balancer, then access the underlying applications. Also, if you take away the load balancer, let's say you have a simple application, maybe your own personal website running in a single EC2, and your single EC2 have an IP address. If you just type in the IP address of the EC2, your website will appear. So when you type in the name of the website, www.xyz.com, the end goal is to somehow achieve the IP address for this Amazon EC2. If I go to whatsmydns.net and search www.google.com, you will see these IP addresses. So if I just copy one of these IP addresses, open a new tab, press enter, google.com appears. However, you don't need to remember these IP addresses. Also, these IP addresses will change based on the scale, the country, and a bunch of other factors. So if I go back to the PowerPoint, this is how it works. When you type in a website, let's say amazon.com, because getting this IP address is a time consuming process, first your computer check the cache if you have the IP address already saved. It checks in your browser cache. If it is not found there, it checks the operating system cache. If it is not found there, it checks the router in your home. And then even if it's not found there, then it goes to your internet service provider cache. Let's say the IP address is not found for amazon.com in any of those cached, then it goes to DNS resolver. This DNS resolver is typically managed by your internet service provider, such as a cable internet provider, DSL broadband provider, or a corporate network if you are typing this in your office laptop. This DNS resolver does a recursive DNS lookup and asks multiple DNS servers around the internet, which in turn ask more DNS servers for the DNS record until it is found. Pretty sure this part is confusing, so let's take a look. So your DNS resolver checks with the DNS root name server says, hey, do you have the IP address for www.amazon.com? This DNS root name server says, I don't have the IP address for amazon.com, but I'm going to give you the name server which has the IP address for all the .com domains. Since this is a .com website, if the website is, let's say, www.xyz.net, then this DNS root name server will send the IP address of the name server for .net. So once DNS resolver gets the name server for .com, it goes to this name server for .com TLD or top level domain. So if it is .net, .net will be the top level domain. This name server tracks what DNS provider has amazon.com. So it says, I don't have the IP address for amazon.com, but I have the root 53 name server that's hosting this www.amazon.com. So DNS resolver, after getting the address of this root 53, goes and asks Amazon root 53, hey, do you have the IP address for amazon.com? And since amazon.com is hosted on root 53, root 53 says, indeed I do. 
and it sends the IP address of the load balancer. And at this point, DNS resolver sends the IP address to your computer. Also, it caches this IP address in the DNS resolver. So next time someone comes for amazon.com, it doesn't have to go through all these recursive DNS queries and it can directly return to the user. As you could see, the end goal of the DNS resolver is to get your computer the IP address of the URL you are trying to reach. Now in this case, we assume that amazon.com is hosted on Amazon Route 53. But even if that's not the case, let's say your URL is hosted on GoDaddy or some other DNS hosting server, this DNS recursive lookup by DNS resolver will finally go to that DNS hosting server and get the IP address for the server or the URL you are looking for. All right, going back to the flow, now your computer knows the IP address that it needs to go to. So your computer invokes that IP address, which ends up in the elastic load balancing that's distributing traffic to the Amazon EC2 servers. And in return, it sends the HTML, CSS, and JS content to your laptop and your laptop renders the web page for amazon.com. So if I open up developer settings on my browser, you will see when you type amazon.com, it returns bunch of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. So you can go and browse that. All the HTML, JavaScript, CSS, they're all coming from the web server that's hosting amazon.com. All right, now you know how the websites are displayed when you type in a URL. All right, folks, this is a very, very important interview question. Watch this, understand the flow, and then you are all set to go for your interview. This lecture is part of my newly released and highly rated Rocking AWS for Beginners with Hands-On Udemy course. Currently, all my best-selling and highest-rated courses on Udemy are on sale. And the best way to get the discount is you go to www.cloudwithraj.com and from there simply click the discounted Udemy link under the course that you are interested in and that will open up the Udemy course with the maximum discount already applied. Buying these courses is a great way to support me and this channel. Alright folks, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one.